In fact. Thank you. Yeah, I start asking questions like this. Okay, welcome everybody. We have Yaren Sono from Bulgaria. Uh, so introduce yourself, Yaren. So my name is Jordan Tsonev, I'm 26 years old, I'm from Bulgaria and I'm into arm wrestling already more than 10 years and this is my third professional super match so, and I'm first time being in Canada also, so far from home but I hope everything will be okay so, who, so are who are you facing? I'm facing the wild horse Matt Mask. This guy is one of the top athletes in the world in uh, in the heavyweight category. I'm facing him on right arm. And yeah, uh, Matt is a very good character. He is very interesting in his performance into arm wrestling. I know him since since I began. I I remember one of his matches from 2010 from World Championships. Um, he he just killed one from one guy from Bulgaria, and it was like stuck in my mind how how fast he he destroyed our guy and now I have opportunity to to try him okay. so, so how when did you start arm wrestling? so I started in 2012 in 2011 I, my interest started to grow uh, in this sport but like really uh, just for arm wrestling, I started in 2012. Before that, I was training also basketball, starting also in and arm wrestling a little bit. But in 2012, I forgot about basketball and I started um, only arm wrestling. Uh, and I have really interesting story about my starting. It was very funny from one side because uh, we were a couple of guys in my in my town. We started to train a little bit and we made our first tournament in my town in Bulgaria. My town is Silistra. It was uh, first of February, the first tournament, and everything went okay. We invited Krasmir as our referee, everything was okay and I really went into this uh, sport, I was like uh, wow, I want to train every day, just this, just this but I was training also basketball, so I couldn't decide which sport to, to take because you cannot do good in two sports, you have to just pick one and go 100% and and to, uh, we, I took part in the Bulgaria's Nationals two months after this and I had one win on my left and two losses after this and one win on right hand because the other guy didn't hear his name so that was my first win <laughs> in good professional tournament and we decided to make another <clears throat> another uh, tournament in our town. It was 16th of May. I, c I will never remember. I will never forget this uh, this day because this day it was the day that everybody from almost everybody from my school class was arm wrestling. I was teaching everybody. Uh, how to how to arm wrestle? There were like three four tables, people arm wrestling at once, 
and I was like sitting and watching yeah yeah that's it I'm growing this sport in my school because usually my school most of the people are like oh, no I don't want arm wrestle I'm weak and this and that blah, blah, blah. but that day uh, everybody was like oh let's try let's try and I was explaining to everybody who was you know arm wrestling how to arm wrestle in order not to break their arms and guess what happened in the afternoon <laughs> no I brought <laughs> Yeah, it was really fun because on that day when I explained to everybody, I said to one friend, I quit basketball, I want to trade only for arm wrestling. And we went to this tournament and I broke my arm in front of everybody. Yeah, I have operation on my right and yeah, uh, two days after this I had birthday and I had operation on my birthday and it was even more funny because uh, they were I was laying on this bed with uh, with wheels and they were pushing me the doctors and I was laying down and a couple of doctors were watching me like in a movie with two balloons happy birthday we're going to cut your arm <laughs> we're going to put some metal in your arm but everything went fine I have a little bit problem with stretching the arm, it's like it's, probably it will never go stretch fully stretch, but I feel it okay. Do you think it came back stronger, stronger? like, like after operation? Mm, mm, my mind, for sure, it was it came back stronger. I I remember when I broke my arms, they put some bandages or something like this just to make it stable. The first two nights and two three hours after I broke my arm. I was in the terrace and remember I was uh, you know thinking oh why 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 did it happen like this my art wrestling career I just began and it's already over and my dad said came to me I don't know what he was going to tell me but I started to cry and shouted him don't tell me to stop I will never stop I will never quit and then he said okay okay <laughs> he came back and yeah, I think then something like changed. I said, I will, I will never quit. And I said to everybody that I will be a world champion, but only my mother told me, okay, if you want to be a world champion, world champion, just write it down. And I wrote it down and I put it on my wall. And my friends who came into my house, you know, when they saw the the world champion sign there was a <laughs> yeah yeah don't worry just don't break your arms anymore <laughs> forget about the world titles but now everybody is like yeah That's so crazy. you were 16 uh yeah you yeah your arm. yeah so you, so you started, started when you were 16 so, so was yeah. Trasimir your coach your first coach uh first yes partner? yes yes my first coach was Krasmir. Uh, we were living 60 kilometers from each other, so it was basically I could go every weekend uh, before big tournaments to check my shape, to ask something. Actually, I have spent in his town like probably two years altogether just to live there in the summer breaks during our you know from one year in school to the other we have three months or two months and a half break i spent two of them there just training so where do you keep arm wrestling what what makes you like love arm wrestling so much uh, i don't really know when it's it's strange, we people cannot really explain why we love something, we just know that we love and it's our thing. The first thing that I thought when a guy from Silistra, who is also a world championship, a uh, world champion, Christian Marinov, but uh, he won 2015 world title in uh, youth division 85 kilos. And yeah, he told me about that sport, that he was going to school with two euros, beating everybody, eating everything that he wants and he 
came back in, at home with seven euros, something like this. And I said, oh yeah, I want to do the same. I want to go to eat everything, whatever I want to spend so much money to beat everybody, to take everybody's money and go back with more money than I went to school. And, and the second thing was that um, the most important thing is that it was like sport, more like underground sport not many people they everybody knows it everybody tried arm wrestling in their lives but almost nobody probably in bulgaria most of the people they they don't know that uh, it's actually a professional sport you can train and i said okay i can be very good at something to compete with other guys and without so many attention from a lot of people you know this, this, I don't know, I like this. And now in the years, I'm starting to understand that uh, arm wrestling helped me a lot. I think uh, the last two years, uh, I had so many problems with my mental state, my physical state. And our wrestling was the only thing, like the only like island that I could grab and stay positive, stay tuned, not fall down. So yeah. Yeah, yeah I think we all feel that. Like yeah. our wrestling is like a teacher for us. Yes, it's like a teacher, but uh, there is a border that we shouldn't pass. It's like it teaches you how to be more confident, how to be stronger, how to be, you know, more famous, how to take care of yourself properly and to understand the world that it's like this, it's the more you give, the more the, more the life gives you back. But um, this border that you forget about the real stuff and you continue just to want more titles, more money, more titles, more subscribers, more of this, more of this, you, you lost your, you're losing yourself this way. So you have to be careful. It can help, the sport can help, but if you are going all the way in, forget about family, forget about, you know, friends and everything, you can lose yourself. So it's like two edged knife. Um, so how many world titles you have won? Two. Two? Yeah, just two. Um, and then European titles, two? Three. Three? Three. Yeah, well... Which arm? Which arm? Right arm? Uh, right arm. So, my first European title, it was uh, youth division. It was 2016, I went, I became second with left and first on right. And then I competed in men's division and I had good fight with Prudnik on left arm and I said well, on the world championships I'll not compete in youth division I'll go directly for the men's division and there on left I made it to second place after Prudnik but uh, 2016 was my first European title and uh, the second was in men's division 2019 on right arm and the European, it was in Greece, Lutraki, as far as I remember. Uh, and the last one was 2021. I won with both arms, but I counted as one title because it's one year, one tournament. Uh, That's humble. Yeah. <laughs> I should be counted as two, but. So, so, what's your experience in uh, tournaments? Like, do you approach tournaments different to super matches? I know you're new to super matches. What's your approach, like mental approach and physical approach to a big tournament? I can see a big difference actually because um, it depends on when I when I train for tournaments. I look who are the top athletes there and or who could be there and I'm preparing to be more efficient more efficient against those people and 
for super much I prefer I prepare against just one guy so I cannot see them. I cannot see any difference, any big difference. Yeah. The numbers the same. Yeah. You have like anxiety or something before tournaments or super matches? Like mentally, how do you approach them? Mm, this is the the border that you shouldn't pass. The more you pass this border, the more anxiety probably you will have. Or the more, the less anxiety you have because you are past this border so much that you are I'm the winner, I'm the winner, I'm the winner yeah, you can win but if you lose and your mind your mind can break down, you know so I'm just going for a competition and with my mind open I don't really care if I win or if I lose I care if I win I want to win, but with my now with my today's mindset, I'm like anyway. Even if I lose, it's okay. So I'm just free from concerns, and this is how I think it's it should be in all the sports. Nothing should be done. 100% you shouldn't go everything for 100% yeah that's a good approach some people like they don't sleep for days before tournaments so yeah I have experienced a little bit of this but I just don't see any point I just don't see so what's your uh, like physical approach in terms of like the Food, supplements, like electrolyte, caffeine before a tournament? Uh, oh, before a tournament or the uh, the preparation before a tournament or just right before the tournament? Both. Okay, so the preparation is the usual stuff, BCAAs, glutamine, creatine, uh, magnesium, uh, fish oil, the basic stuff. I feel best from basic stuff, protein shakes, gainer, shakes and uh, before tournament, one week before tournament I stop the creatine because it makes you pump and I don't drink caffeine I, I have one friend who is in the Bulgarian weightlifting uh, team and he said that when he tries um, some pills that makes you calm uh, he has better results so I think caffeine, caffeine is probably not that good because it makes you go alert like especially for tournaments for one hour and it drops you down after this but your category can can last three hours and what if you what if you go in, into the semi-finals or finals you have to drink again and then again it's I don't see any point in doing more damage to your nervous system really yeah, yeah I think I agree with that so what, so what about um, like warm up. Do you believe in warm up? Some athletes say no warm up. Some athletes say warm up. Of course, warm up. Of course, of course. It helps you prevent injuries. Uh, I warm up the so. The more I train, the more hours I train, the harder I train, the more warm up I need before tournaments. And yeah, I try to to go. Let's say from ten percent to twenty percent next set 30 40 percent going a little bit more and more uh, during the warm-up if I warm up with a guy who is holding me with two hands I try it a little bit harder a little bit harder until I before the actual match I I want to know that I did one set for 100 marks pushed 
So no, I know that everything is prepared for 100 max effort, not just pump a little bit with you know with rubber bands and then go directly into the fight. I don't want this will destroy my arms. Yeah, yeah I think I agree with that. There's there are some athletes, athletes like. Uh, uh, Michael Todd, they say no warm up, but his style is. Yeah, yeah, you can see Michael Todd with a couple of injuries in the right arm and on the left, yeah, so. Uh, I don't think he's a good example about that. Um, so, I'm going to move on to some like uh, doping questions. So, when did we first start? Taking stuff that you knew that uh, taking stuff I have never taken any prohibited stuff uh, you know, about steroids and those kind of stuff. Just um, just supplements, just the usual supplement. Because steroids, you know, I have been thinking, I have been wondering, of course, how strong will I get if I just train perfectly done regime training sleeping eating and the best you know steroids or something like whatever you need just the top 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 but as i am keep as i keep thinking first of all i don't think i'm not this type of mind that i don't care what i am putting into my body i am really careful about, about it because when I, if let's say if I take something and I, if I feel something into my body that is not correct, I will say, oh, probably it's from this, which is not really good. <laughs> but um, and I really think that it's not very healthy to to start from this young age to put something that is not it's not natural. <laughs> And most of the guys that I have been asking and speaking, they're, you know, gaining like 10% more strength because of the steroids, you know. And usually, if you have noticed on the big tournaments, the winner is 2-3% stronger than the other guy. So, if you're 2-3% th stronger from the other guy, I don't think that you won the tournament. I think the steroids won the tournament, you know? Really? <laughs> uh, do you believe in doping control and that? Do you think it's 100% accurate? I don't know. I don't really. You don't, I don't, don't care? I, I don't know really because, you know, one of our guys, uh, he, he said that uh, the president of WAF uh, ordered to him to take the, all the doping samples into the fridge of his restaurant. So I don't, I don't know if it is like <laughs> it is like one hundred percent sure. And also, as I have done so many, uh, uh, how to say, um, tests about my body, about the other guy's body, about so many stuff, about COVID, about uh, just typical blood, blood uh, check, checking, you know, tests. And there are some, um, sometimes the, um, uh, the laboratories are not 100% sure, you know, and I cannot be sure. So the one, the one thing that I can be sure is that I have never taken anything and that's it. <laughs> I know just about myself, about the other guys, I cannot tell. So you're, so you're not scared, scared of competing at the elite level where people take it openly? Do you think it's, it's enough? Mm, like you're just strong naturally? No, not naturally. I'm just training as hell naturally. <laughs> I have been... <laughs> Uh, training my ass off like four or five hours every day so <laughs> but uh, yeah I don't really care what can I say don't take steroids yeah. and the other guys say okay you said not don't, don't you guys guys. Guys. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> everybody has their own head to choose what's right and what's wrong yeah. 
Um, so, what's up with Bulgarian Federation and WAP? I heard that some of the athletes are banned from WAP. Yeah, I am one of those athletes. So, it's a long story, but I think we have time. Uh, so, we have federation since more than 25 years. We have many champions, world, European, national champions. But the guy who is ahead, the head of the our federation, uh, who is the head of the European and the world champion federation, world championship federation, this guy is there since the beginning of our federation pretty much and when they began to uh, develop arm wrestling in Bulgaria everything was I think pretty good in Bulgaria they were shown on the TV they were uh, giving opportunity to earn uh, a lot of like golden stuff or uh, cars or they were making good tournaments you know but the more this guy uh, because he has some friends in the politics and everything the more this guy you know were making sure of his um, how to say leadership the less money he gave so this border he crossed the border. Power. And yeah, it's... I don't... It's the chance of going back to real life for him. I don't know what's like 1% or... Um, so the last couple of years, there were almost zero good tournaments in Bulgaria. Uh, we are not shown in the TV like before. I remember when I was like let's say t 10 years old i remember when i switched on the tv i saw arm wrestling and krasmiller to told me that to around 2005-2006 there were a lot of arm wrestling shown on the tv but now almost zero tv N nobody nobody knows about arm wrestling so just this guy is taking the money and doing nothing for the for the sport nothing the last two three years even he, he was making before one tournament nationals and one other tournament um, he was in the other town there was like big sponsor who was giving him money and he was making another tournament there tournament in which you can earn money but the last couple of years they mixed so he's making just one nationals in this guys and the sponsors city everything together so no more no double expenses for two tournaments and everything just one tournament and the next are European and world championships uh, and um, also, in Bulgaria, like in many countries, when we take a gold or just a medal at the Europeans and the World Championships, uh, we are getting money. And also, our trainer gets money. And I don't have trainer. Nobody from Bulgaria has trainer. Everybody trains by their own or we are exchanging some experience and that's it that's it or let's say Cetan Gashevsky is one of the the guys who is world champion and around him couple of guys made it to the world top and Krasimir also he is the guy who showed me Bozhidar, Dimitrina Petrova uh, uh, Sasha Andreev and Elbin Ferra, these are guys around Krasimir who are world championship, world uh, champions. But um, all the money for the trainers are going to Asen's wife. <laughs> you know, 
She is just she understands from arm wrestling. She knows the sport. She has competed, but she is doing nothing. So she gets the money. Yeah, she gets the money. You know, and we know everybody in Bulgaria knows this. Everybody knows this. And in 2018, we decided to to make you know um, to go to one place to speak with this guy with Asen on our nationals 2018, and we started speaking. Uh, but uh, then he said, basically, piss off, and if you want to talk to me, let's talk with lawyers. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And nothing happened then. Uh, so in the last couple of years, the th the things with the Bulgarians, you know, championships are getting worse and worse and worse. And then we decided one of our uh, competitors, he's lawyer, so he knows how the, the, you know, the, the system works. So we wanted from our government um, documents for the last 10 years, what our federation, uh, showed what kind of documents for you know spending the money from the government and we saw that there are so many things that are unright you know first his wife is my trainer which nobody nobody uh, second he's making fake uh, um, training camps let's say he wrote my name in 2021 that I have been in training camp 40 days yeah I have never been and, and he took yeah and he took like 10,000 euro for this just for this and for everything else like just writing down let's say uh, in 2020 2019 I think the world or 2000 what was 2021 was the world championships in in Romania in Bucharest I think and Cetan went from his town to there it's like 300 kilometers or something like this with his car but on the papers he took his car he went to Sofia he took the airport the flight from uh, from there to I cannot remember even the the country from other country and from this country he went to to Bucharest. What what was that man? <laughs> and for plane tickets, couple of yeah, couple of hundreds yeah. scam. Yeah, for this, this, for this, and we said okay. Let's take let's gather everyone who is a president of a club, and make sure that uh, everybody is on the same opinion. If he wants to speak to this guy again, if he wants to make a new federation, we just want to decide what we are going to do with our sport. Because we didn't, everybody started this uh, competing and this sport because of love uh, about this sport. This guy, he doesn't know anything about our wrestling. When you see him grip on the tables for photos, you, you see him like... like my, my, my grandmother gives better, you know? <laughs> so you can see clearly that he doesn't know anything about arm wrestling. And... Uh, so he started developing arm wrestling just for money, nothing else. And we are the ones who so have to decide what is going to happen with the arm wrestling in Bulgaria. The people who are competing, not everybody, not this guy. So why are you banned from back? Is it because of him? So we gathered and we decided to make a new federation and start suing him. Start uh, an investigation. He, we showed to the government documents and showed that these documents are not correct. You know, it's, you know, 
everybody is talking about documents this you have to be written have to you know it has to be signed but god created us without documents so the reality and the documents they are like sometimes in the different directions so it happens like this uh, there is so big space between the reality and the, the documents and we showed this to the government and now they are investigating i hope that they are with their clear mind they are not corrupt uh, but i am not really sure and just to see what is the what's the truth and that's it everything will be okay and when they this guy figured out that we are gathering you know he started calling us a guy from the uh, federation called me and said oh you're done it's going we're um we are making a training camp this year you're invited there will be swimming pools jacuzzis everything you just need to come <laughs> and i said really i am in the national team since 2014 and i have been to a training camp just once in 2017 for seven days and now when we started a new federation you are calling me to invite me to to your training camp so i said piss off i don't want to talk to you anymore and this is where the problems went went viral but not everybody was with us you see who is competing everybody now who is competing in the europeans and worlds are taking part of their training money now you understand he bought mm -hmm. half of the bulgarians they sold themselves mm -hmm. so, so he's he giving them money to be in a side yeah they went to this training camps some of them and he said okay i'll give you part of the money and they said oh, okay <laughs> really <laughs> yeah Bojdar Sasha. and the other guys you can see who are there they're, they're they're athletes, athletes, you know? like they, they want to compete yeah they want to compete them. but they're across this border that i have told you mm. that they are forgetting themselves you can work everything you can be a trash guy I have been this summer trash guy. I, w I was throwing trash. Who cares? I'm earning the same money. They are not giving us millions in Bulgaria. But you can be a fair trash guy and unfair 10 times world champion like Sasha. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the, the more funny is that we made uh, a video. We told to one reporter and this reporter made investigation and he showed that it's total scam in our federation we made so uh, like videos that we are saying that this woman his wife is not our trainer and he's taking the money and and in some time after this Hassan went to the uh, to one of the our big news televisions and he was there saying we have so many champions I'm not stealing money we have so many champions and some of them Božidar, Sasha Andreev, Georgi Cvetkov guys who have been swearing at him made a video made a video saying we support this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but those oh stuff God. we know it in bulgarian federation we everybody knows what is happening everybody knows just some people won't prefer the money that's it so, so ideally, ideally it, it would be best, best. let's, let's say, say that, that guy we can't, we can't uh, make, make him go, go with because, because he has money, right? right? Money, money is power. Is power. Hmm. What, what if, if your federation, federation could also compete in that? Would that, that be ideal? ideal? Like no that. way, no way, because in Bulgaria only one federation per sport has oh. the license. And now he has the license. Mm. 
the guy who is stealing money has the license. Politics, yeah, like yeah, politics. yeah. And what do you, what do you want? He is the head of the European and the World Champion uh, Federation. Do you think if we have license, we can ask him? Can we compete in your federation? What is, do you think he's going to say? Okay, no problem. <laughs> no way, no way, just no way. So he has, so he has to, to go, go away. away. He has to think. be ripped apart from arm wrestling forever. So, so who do you think? Do you think, think only arm, arm wrestlers should, should be like head, head of sport? Let's like yeah. say Tassi yeah. or you will be yeah. elected. Oh, listen, the guy who is elected shouldn't have power. Everything is what kind of system? If the system is like this, like triangle, nothing's going to happen. Anyone who is on the top in some years over the over the barrier he will be, he will start stealing money okay i need a little bit money for this i need a little bit more for this no you do, i don't like you disqualified i don't like this guy disqualified so the system should be different direct democracy uh, another system the guys who are uh, who are in the um, uh, who are, let's say, presidents of clubs should have the right to vote, not the guy who is on the top. And this is how should be all around the world. All around the world. And, but, the best way to stop this kind of stuff is when the lowest level of the pyramid just knows the truth, takes decisions to just don't compete and that's it. Nobody can do anything. If these guys didn't solve themselves, what was going to happen? He was he was going to go in the national TV and say what? Uh, he he was just saying how many titles our guys you know won without saying that no Russians, no Georgians. You know, <laughs> what? Okay, let's move away from yeah. here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, this is pretty much it. Yeah, Vav should look into it, right? <laughs> and <laughs> no, the other, the other competitors all around the world should look at it. They should stand up for themselves. Yeah. For yeah. The they cannot disqualify everyone. If everybody goes wherever they want, what is going to happen? You know that they are forbidding me and Plamen and Setan to go to East versus West also? Why is that? Is it because VAF has some connection? With yeah. East versus West? Yeah. Oh. That's sad. We yeah. hope this yeah, get resolved. I don't know. Yes. Um, so. You said they give money, right? How much money do they give you? Let's say you win WAF, you're under that guy. So in, in Bulgaria, when you win first place in the World Championships, you get 4,500 euro. If you earn, if you win European, you get 3,500 euro. So it's pretty much nothing, almost. Nothing else, like no. for training, supplements? No, 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 no. no. But no. Do you think that... That guy who's uh, running Bulgarian Federation is taking lots of money, right? That should be going to you guys for your support. Listen, every year he takes almost 100 euro, 100,000 oh, euro. For nothing? For, for the, to support the Bulgarian arm wrestling. Just government is giving him. Yeah, and the, yeah, the government is giving him and he spends, I don't know what, 20, 30,000 euro. And that's it. Also, the clubs can make, um, let's say, a program, and these documents with the program for the next year, we uh, candidate for money from our government. But in order to get to our government, this guy has to sign the documents and send it to government. And guess which clubs are getting money? The clubs that are for him are getting money. 
Not mine. Yeah, that's sad. Hopefully this gets sorted out. There's corruption in every country, trust me. Like, I know, I know. But we cannot... I cannot explain to those guys. We cannot fix our government, our Bulgaria. We cannot fix the world. But we can try to fix our little federation. And you can see with the butterfly effect, this guy, I don't see if he's not the president of the Bulgarian Federation, how can he be the head of the European and the World Federation? You know? Yeah. So with a little bit, it's like domino. You push something, everything falls apart, falls apart. And you can imagine if everybody around the world just wakes up and says, don't tell me what to do. And that's it. You just sacrifice. One year, couple of hundreds, thousands of euro for your freedom. Nothing. Yeah, I agree with that. Just showing how much corruption is in WAF and even bigger associations. Everybody knows that there is corruption. Yeah, we have to stand up for ourselves, support local tournaments. Not from ourselves, yeah. because if you stand for our, for yourself, just for yourself, it is like it is. It will be like this. Because those guys who sold themselves, they stood up for themselves. If you, you the sport has given you money, experience in life, uh, popularity, strength, health. This is only stuff for yourself. You have to give it back without taking anything. You have to risk something for the sport. Give us a flex here and let's see those guns. So these are natural guns, guys. Of course, yeah. So what's your training like? What's your training plan? For a week? Like how many uh, days a week? Table time? How many times fully? So it's different. I cannot really say it's different. Uh, let's say sometimes in from seven days I train seven, seven days. Sometimes I train four, five. It depends how I feel, it depends um, when do I have competition, but let's say between five and six days, let's say. I'm training three times, mostly per day or two times when I'm training hard before competition. So first training is, I can, I can tell you directly my, my regime if you want. I don't care. Sure, yeah. So I'm getting up at um, 8 o'clock in the morning, eating, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock for training, then eating, then from 3.30 to 5.30 second training, and the third training is for, from, let's say, 8.30 to 9.30. Five hours a day. Yeah, almost. something like this. Sometimes five hours and a half, sometimes four and a half. Around five hours. And yeah, sometimes I miss one of the trainings because I have something to do or just I don't feel this muscle group good and I just don't do it. So every training you do right and left? Yeah. All first. exercise? Yeah, you should, you have to be balanced. You cannot just forget about one of your arms. Yeah, I think you should be balanced. Um, so, all your training is in the table, either pulley, sparring? No one, so the first two trainings, or the first training is on the crisis pulley, and the second training is on the table also with sparring partner, but the third training is with free weight. I'm doing just for rotation or something from the ground and I built um, uh, this kind of pulling system with rolling handles and I just do pull-ups with weights and that's it. So pull-ups is like your only strength exercise, everything else is pulley based or like pronation like... Yeah, yeah. So what um, advice would you give to like, let's say 15 year old, you are 16, 15. Yeah. You didn't never go to the gym for like general strength? 
Now, there is no such thing as general strength. This is like a myth. Of course, if you don't train arm wrestling uh, and do nothing, you will be weaker than if you do, let's say, bench press and then you arm wrestle. You know, it helps, okay. But uh, when you don't do uh, uh, bench press and you do some side pressure or back pressure or something, it will help you more about your arms. And everybody says, okay, you can do back pressure, you can do rotation, side pressure, but if you do also bench press half an hour, let's say, it will help you. And I will say, yeah, but if you don't do half an hour bench press and do half an hour more side pressure, you will be better in arm wrestling. For sure. <laughs> I don't see why people are doing this kind of exercise, but it's their choice. Yeah, I think there is some training principle. Devin doesn't do anything. Yeah, but you know, different people, different bodies, yeah. everybody. Even just for basic, basic like to put on a size, maybe it's okay. Just to look better, yeah. Not to have like fat or something, like, you know, skinny legs like me. But so how tall? You're like uh, six three, one ninety one centimeter. Yeah. Were you this tall when you started when you were sixteen? Same no, height almost. No, no, no. I was like 170 something, I don't know, 176, 177. So you grew yeah. after you started out, let's say, you grew taller. Yeah, I was training basketball, but I don't know, is it from the sport or just, of course it will be from the sport, but I'm not sure that if you train basketball, you're getting taller. If you train uh, weightlifting, you'll get shorter. I, I, <laughs> I don't That's think that, yeah, I don't think it is like this. It is great. Uh, so all your training is in the so if you had to choose people say some people say cup is king, some people say rotation is king king. What do you think it is like if you had to give most importance? Side pressure, back pressure, pronation? I don't know why people want, they want the key, they want the shortcut to everything, they want, tell me the secret, no, there is no king, there is nothing more important than the other thing, everything is connected, you cannot just train, it is better to train more something but to everybody is different thing and you have to train more your weakest spots and by weakest spots i'm not saying that um, let's say if you are a tricep puller you have to if you are a, let's say top rower you have to train more triceps you just know which point against your next opponent or opponent is weaker so you just go there, do more cupping, do more, or maybe, of course, triceps. If you cannot finish them, you just need more triceps to finish. So it's different. So you do everything, rise, cupping, back this, pressure, uh, rising. This part I don't do, but probably I should start doing Yeah, it. Devin is on this rampage saying that rice is king right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not king, but I think it's like, Okay, to do some something for this part of your hand. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I started doing rising. I feel it helps a little bit. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I feel I got a little bit stronger. Yeah, about the better grip it helps. Grip. Yeah. yeah. So you have this weird handle, right? I've seen in your training. It's like a cuponator with a thing for the thumb. I have it here. You, you want to show it? Maybe we do video. I take a picture later. Uh, I was wondering if I want to sell it, but okay, okay, I will show it. Okay, just yeah, wait sure. a little bit, yeah. Thank you, sure. Okay, guys, let's wait for him to show his special handle. Yeah. I think it's like really good. It's like a, it's like those Michael Tarr handles, but it doesn't look like a plastic piece of shit. 
It's a cuponator wrist wrench that most people use with a special uh, place for the thumb. So it really attacks this portion of his hand, which is really important for a high hook, you know, like you want to squeeze the other person's thumb. So I think it, it helps to get that John Bressing kind of thumb when you're in the hook. Any questions that uh, you want me to ask him? We'll be here for like 20 more minutes and then we'll go to And then we'll go to a Turkish restaurant to get some food for him, fuel up, some kebabs and stuff. Yeah, that, that was recorded. Okay, this is dead. So, so this is pretty much it. It's just the wood with just this. Mm. It's just a piece of wood, eh? No, not. It's just one piece. Yeah. Just the the this part of the, the tree. I just cut it from here, here, and here. And it's like a thumb. And I was like uh, reshaped it a little bit. And I put a little bit like, and I put a little bit like bandages over it, and yeah, I reshaped it like, like just for my arm, and this is pretty much it. It's like wrist wrench but with thumb, and I feel it like the most realistic for me. I wanted to call it the top row cure. In two days we will figure out if uh, we will figure out if it's real top roll killer. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we we'll find out. So you just found this piece of wood like how many years ago did you start find this? One or two years. Before that just regular carpenter. Yeah, just regular, regular stupid stuff. Mm. So you think this this is improved your the technique? No no technique but the feeling. I love to do uh, okay, I can do back pressure, but with the handle that I want. I like to train um, with good feeling in my arm, let's say. I don't want just something to rub my arm. I just want to feel very good, very good. Okay. And once I just grabbed one tree, I don't know why. I just grabbed one tree and I was oh, oh, if I grab it with you, okay. And I went to the wood. Uh, into the forest and uh, with my friend in one hour I was searching for the perfect piece and I cut the perfect piece, made it and yeah, it's already two years Nice That's a... Uh, your dancho handle? Yeah You got a dancho handle? Like classic yeah, really pretty much simple handle. Pretty much simple stuff but I like it mm. yeah. Everyone just Go to your nearest tree, find a handle. Yeah, yeah, it helps. Hey, you know, I was in my grandparents' house in front of it, and I was wondering where will I find another pieces. And in two me the next two meters, I found two, two pieces, and I cut it. In. So you sold that? You make? You no, made? no, I just made this kind of handles, but I made on the about ah. the, the the pull up system. I drew a hole. It's like this. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much same thing. Okay, we gotta trademark that. So, what is your name for Dancho? I wanted to ask you that. This is like Jordan, but the smaller. It's like, oh. yeah. It's not like a my no, no, it's no, no, it's not like nickname. I don't know, it's, it came from uh, one guy from Tiberio. He is Romanian, I think, and on the world and the European Championships in 2016, I think, when he was calling my name on the stage, because he hears everybody saying to me, not Jordan, Dancho, 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 and he probably he thought that it's like a nickname, and he said, Jordan, Dancho, Tsonev, and from this moment, Everybody calls me Jordan Dancho Tonev. Like Dancho is nickname, but it's not. It's just like the, we gotta get a better nickname. Then are you happy with that? 
about the nickname Dancho. Yeah. That's nice. I, yeah, I, I don't care about nicknames. Yeah. You know Chang Sha? He's in the chat. He's asking who do you want to face next if you win against Manus? Uh, I don't know. It depends. If I win, it depends how easy I win. So if, if I win hard, if it is hard, probably maybe Sandris, maybe someone else. I don't know. But if I win easy and now we are making someone good, pretty much like good tournament in Bulgaria. And if I win there after this, I think I can go directly for Devon. But I don't know what kind of sh what kind of shape I am right now. I saw that he smashed Sandris, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think even Sandris or even yeah. I like to see Angarbayev or Prudni. Yeah. From uh, Team East. Okay. But Team West. Uh, I don't know. Chan Shah say uh, looks like he wants to face you. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I don't care. Maybe East yeah. versus West. Yeah. <laughs> not when we are oh, so you got the oh, Sorry, sorry. You forgot. <laughs> uh, but be strong, I'm wrestling. Yeah. Yes. Chan Shah. No, yeah, I, I don't. I don't care. Just. Mm. So Sanders is someone you've never faced in WAF or tournaments. No. We met after pool in when I faced one year ago Todd Hutchings, I think after this we met, but on, only on left. And I was feeling okay the, then, but now I don't know. And my right is not that good as my left, and he's better at his right, so I don't know what's going to happen. So your left is like slightly better than your right. Yes, yeah, slightly better, and especially against top rowers, I think it's you can feel the difference. If I tell someone to take my wrist with both arms, when I go with the left hand, they say, "Oh, this is way better." And this is because on the left I have, of course, stronger wrist, and I can use my triceps press a little bit um, because of the broken arm on the right I, I cannot really I can but I have to overcome these fears of you know not getting hurt a little bit so left arm who do you want to face? The guitar had many super match have you had a super match left arm? Oh, no never no everybody is in my so you don't know mm, I don't know I think uh, maybe Dadikian, because he's also a hook puller. Yeah, Dadikian or Morozov or... I don't know, uh, Morozov now is like very big, big. And I'm also big, but I'm fat, but <laughs> he is like... He has only muscles. <laughs> and I think that... Yeah... It will be a good choice for me. Mm. Daddy can, I think, maybe. Daddy can, yeah. Uh, king of the table. Yeah, king of the king table. King of the table, hit him up. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we'll see. You're close to Dubai, no? But mm, yeah. No, not really. Not but really. they fly you. What? They'll, they'll fly you. I think, yeah. If that part, yeah. yeah. should be. Who else is. Uh, so in Bulgaria, you, you can beat everyone, you think? Gargi, Setkov, There are Sanger. some people like Krasimir, Sasha on the left, but Setkov also on the left. Uh, Bozdar, I have to be careful also with him. But on left arm? Yeah, on left arm also. Bozdar beats Krasimir since two years at mm -hmm. least. On the trainings. On the trainings. Training. And most of the times, sometimes Krasner beats him, but most of the time Bozdar beats him on left, so he just I don't have to underestimate. Also, Stefan Lengarov on the left arm from Bulgaria, we were on the finals with him in 2021. This guy on the left is one of the top, I think, under, under 90 kilos, for sure, he is one of the top guys. 
especially against top rollers, he's very good. Chancho says he you don't want to face him because he want to win. Who? Chancho. Chancho says what? He says uh, I don't want to face him because because you want to win. <laughs> oh, Chance, man. Uh, do you remember what happened on the left when we pulled after the East versus West yeah. one year ago? It will happen the same probably on the right arm, man. So if you want to prove me wrong, just say and we will figure something out. Yeah. We'll figure something? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, so left arm, you have no, no names. You want to call out someone? Mm. I think your left arm is very good. I've seen uh, videos of you beating Gargi Setkov at uh, WAF. Yeah. No, no, it okay. was at uh, one tournament in mm. Bulgaria. Oh, okay. Mm, but and he has, his left is good, no? A super heavyweight? Yeah, he is very good. But you have the advantage, you can, I don't think he he can hook. And you're, no. he was not in the top row. No, he is good top row, very good top row. But his side pressure is not that good actually. But his right arm in the last one, two years is better than his left because he has injuries on his left and his side pressure also on his right is way better than on the left. So, did you learn anything after uh, Tower Hutchings? Yeah, I, uh, as I have told you, that I have learned that. Arm wrestling shouldn't be your only thing to think about mm. because if this is your only island and when somebody beats you, basically your island disappears. You sink with your island or you learn how to build another island, you know. So this is the main thing that I, I faced. And yeah, but uh, I learned that I have to be stronger where I should be stronger. I mean that against Todd Hutchings, I used my side pressure the worst, uh, which is the worst thing um, to use against Todd Hutchings. Todd Hutchings is going like this and I was pushing directly into his like bone with my with my stupid style against him I should have been pulling with the back pressure and the, you know, the bicep and the rotation but I just didn't have enough time to prepare I had Europeans after one month world champions after one month um, the match in Moscow with Bogoslov and after one month with Todd Hutchings and I was like I, I couldn't regenerate so fast fast enough. But I was at every next tournament I was a little bit better. I was a little bit better. So it, I was okay. So how many per ten percentage you're stronger than your face star no, 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 I don't know. I cannot say with percents, you know I can I am doing a little bit different types of exercises, let's say a little bit different handles I'm using and uh, I cannot say how many percent. You just yeah yeah I'm I'm a little bit stronger yeah but uh, my stamina is not that good. Mm. No, I don't know because I don't train at all because I'm way fatter <laughs> before. I don't know why, but my stamina is. Chancha says his right arm. Is your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's my daddy, man. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's see. He can say whatever he wants. He can say whatever he wants, but uh, it will not matter. You know, uh, as uh, did he, he was from the beginning of the interview. There? Yeah, oh. yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, so chance go back a little bit and you have to hear me about the diff when, when it's really bad to have big difference between the reality and your imagination. <laughs> so just just think about it for a moment. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so what's your confidence level going up to mass? Oh, I'm not really. I'm 50-50. Yeah, if when I start thinking about if I'm going to win or not, let's say sometimes I think I've got this. Sometimes I think I don't think I, uh, I've got this because I have seen Sandris how he beat Mask, Prudnik also, but also with Krasimir, what Matt Mask did to Krasimir was like a little bit uh, shocking. You know. mm, yeah, so I cannot really say, I cannot say. Yeah. Let's find out on yeah, Saturday, find by the pay-per-view guys. For sure we will find out. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll wrap it up here. Is there anything else you want to say before we get some food? Well, subscribe to his channel, uh, buy the pay-per-view and just be careful about these borders that I have been seeing because it's really stupid to somebody crossing yeah. the border. Let's just talk about my goal. I totally forgot about it. Oh yeah, my goal. My goal is... Uh, I don't know this guy, I have never seen him live, but I know him from videos. When I started wrestling, I have watched probably almost the, all the videos in YouTube with the main stars. And my goal is one of those grandpas with big guns, <laughs> with so big muscles, you know. And the last time when I faced one grandpa, <laughs> he destroyed me. I mean, Tokajin is one year ago. So I have bad experience with all the guys, but I hope that I can win this fight. Yeah, he's. Uh, he messaged me saying, I know Jordan is very strong, he's world champion, stronger than me, but I want to have a big match. Okay. One last big match. Okay, okay. And I said, okay, for sure. He's yeah. the king of Canadian arm wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's one of the guys who. Developing arm wrestling into Canada since like what 30 years or more? Yeah, I don't know. 1997, my cool classic. Oh, so yeah, for sure, 30 years he is into arm wrestling. So yeah, I'm really grateful that uh, I'm here. It's the first time I have been so long from home, and I, I can, I'm in a new continent. I will see a little bit different people, so thank you for inviting me. What's your favorite food, Yana? Last question, what's your, what's your favorite food? Every morning I'm doing Bulgarian yogurt. The yogurt is Bulgarian, not Greek, it's Bulgarian. And there is this special Bulgarian uh, bacteria there that helps you be stronger than they are. And I like Bulgarian yogurt, and also I like very much rice. I like rice. I like rice. Sometimes I think I will do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyways, I like very much rice and Bulgarian yogurt. What's your favorite meat? Like lamb meat, chicken meat, beef? I don't know. You eat everything. I like pork, but I I will stop eating pork because it's not really healthy. Lamb is very good, also, but it depends how the cooker did his job. You know, sometimes you like something, and the next time you don't like it. You have Indian food in Bulgaria, Indian restaurant. I don't know. Some about pro okay, probably, probably we have. Probably we have. You tried the Indian food. I cannot okay. remember, I cannot yeah. remember. I'll cook you, I'm a good cook, trust okay. me. Okay, okay. I'll cook you uh, one day. Okay. Well, okay, let's find out if he likes uh, Indian food. Okay. okay, let's sign out here, guys. Give us a flex. Be strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be strong. See you guys. Take care.